Boris, we're here at Erin Depot. Um, it's very busy. I've been, although you tell me it's not busy. Uh, there's a lot happening on the ground, quite literally on the roads. We're here to ask you what's happening to do with potholes in the road situation. Well, just in the, the last, in this financial year, we've actually repaired over 71,000 potholes. 71,000? That's right. 71,000. Normally in a whole year, we might get up to about 60,000. But with this weather event, it's, it's just been massive. It's been a massive effort. And from, from February, from the, the, the rain event, we've, we've um, undertaken 32,000 repairs of potholes so far. So let's get, how many kilometres of roads does the Central Coast have? So we've got around you know, 2,200 kilometres of road. So you know, it's obviously an expansive network. And you know, we have got about 8,000 potholes still in the backlog at the moment. Now, with these, uh, with these 8,000 potholes you have in the backlog, why is it that the community just seems to see so many of them? What, what, what's happening there? Look, just with the wet weather, you know, once we've had that from, you know, it's a prolonged wet weather and, and fairly intense, it does open up the road. So essentially, if you have a, you know, a small crack or a deformation in the pavement, the water gets in there. Mm -hmm. And that water gets to the underlying area of the pavement, so below the asphalt and the, you know, the harder surface. And as vehicles drive over that, that actually pumps out with the water a little bit of the fines, you know, bit by bit, and takes the, the underside supporting the road out and the, the top falls away. And then you get the ledge breaks and that falls across. Now you were telling me of the technical details before about heavy traffic being much more impactful than than cars, which, which you say have a very little effect. Yeah, look, you know, the, the heavier vehicles and, and volume is the impact. On, on the pavement. So you can imagine, and these pavements are flexible pavements, so the heavier the, the vehicle, the more the, the flex, and then the potential to, to actually break and, and form those potholes. So we've seen a huge increase in traffic on the Central Coast, there's projections of a lot more. Uh, it, how, how are we going to deal with this, uh, this huge increase in roads? Look, it hasn't, you know, over the network, they haven't been designed you know, for, for those sorts of, uh, of traffic in some of those villages. Um, we, when we do renewal projects, we certainly look at, at that. So um, that can be designed so that you know, the overlays are slightly thicker to, to cater for some of those things. So I see, so you're saying like new roads, like for example, the Oakville or Sparks Road, when you do a new lay, you improve the quality of the underlay? We, yeah, look, we, we do. Some, it depends what sort of road it is. We, we have geotechnical advice when we, we do those renewals. Sometimes we have to take the whole road out, sometimes we do in situ stabilisation where we add in lime or cement or sometimes foam bitumen and that turns us you know, down you know, 200 to 300 millimetres and gives a really good base and then we put a surface on that. Well you've had commitments in the latest round of federal elections for more money. Uh, I expect you'll be following up on those, um, those commitments. Oh definitely, you know, that, that's something that's just settled down with the, the the federal seats, so give them a few days, um, but we certainly be following up, and, and that's that's the plan. Plan, yes. Now tell me, you've 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 gone out, or you've reacted to the community's wishes to know what's happening um, out there on this 2,200 kilometre network. You've created this new uh, pothole feedback information map I see on the website. Take us through why you did that and what's that, how does it work? Look, it was it, we we couldn't just rely on the public to report those potholes in. So, and, and a lot of times the public think that someone else is, is going to report it and um, it doesn't get reported at all, at all. So I actually had to pull people off different parts of the organisation and we did a survey of the entire network. So that's the 2,200 kilometres, we did it by areas and we collected that information. Now that information we're using and we can, you know, we've put it on, on, the, uh, on, on our website and we're going through that in a systematic approach. On top of that, there's obviously areas that are you know, high speed, high volume, and they get a, you know, a, a priority, but we're trying to go through a systematic approach to have that backlog of, of 8,000 know, potholes um, to pre-storm levels. And that's around 2,000 potholes. 
you know, at any one time we're carrying, which is, you know, you'd say, you know, one pothole in every kilometre, roughly. So the intention is that that would take us four weeks. We've got the manpower to, to do that. We've, we've brought in other crews and resources so that we can get this done. It's a real priority for the community. There are some parts of the network that have, have, have experienced slippage as well. Uh, how, do they, how do they get dealt with? So that's another impact on our resources. So it's the same team looking after a lot of these sorts of things. We're, we're dealing with transport from New South Wales. Um, it just recently, as recently as this week, we have got some additional funding to look at some geotechnical engineers um, and some project managers so that we can um, address the, you know, the that's 50 hot slip sites across the, the entire local government area as well. And uh, to add this to the context, a lot of these, well, a, a good portion of roads, um, in addition to yours, are state government roads, aren't they? Look, that's right. So, you know, we've got 2,000 plus, you know, theirs is in the, the order of, of, of 200 odd kilometres. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do some assistance and some resealing works under the road maintenance contract between us and, um, and Transport for New South Wales, but it's primarily a, a transport function. So just to ask the sort of questions that the residents might have, um, how many people and how are you going with resourcing in your in your department to go and do all of this work? Well, yeah, we, we've got 11 crews dedicated to, to this sort of stuff. So yeah, we've also, yeah, everyone's impacted by you know, COVID and, and with the isolation rules and those sorts of things have impacted us you know, as everyone else. And we have been able to get some labour hire people to fill in those, those um, spaces, spaces, which has been very helpful to keep the resources focused on that. Additional to that, we've got four contracts also working for us at the moment. Um, you know, three of them are doing heavy patches, so it's not just filling the pothole, it's doing a medium term solution. So they cut out a section and then put some you know, deep lift ash fill. So three contracts are doing that and we, we've got another contract doing additional potholes across the okay. So just back to the technicalities, I know the on ground problem is someone sees a pothole that's reported, comes and it's filled, it starts to rain and then the whole thing falls apart again. How do you, how do you deal with that? Look, it, it does mean at times we have to go back to the same pothole a number of times. So when it's wet, you can't use the hot mix and you can't use the same sort of technique. So they have bag products and cold mix. So they make the, the area safe as possibly you know, they can and they reschedule to, to go back. Now, ideally, we need a longer period of, of dry weather. We've been very unlucky in that, that space. Um, you know, we did a, you know, there was some good weather last week and we did a three day blitz of bringing other crews in as well as what I've, I've spoken about because we had that opportunity and that made a big difference. All right, well, I think that's it, unless you have anything else to say. Uh, look, it, it is a, you know, we certainly apologise to the community. This isn't something that, you know, everyone, you know, no one wants to, to be dealing with as a, as a, as a motorist. Um, just in relation to our staff, you know, the crews are doing the best they can. They're literally, you know, working as hard as they can and, you know, having the resources that we've got. You know, sometimes we're getting, People go past giving them a thumbs up in you know, a positive way, and sometimes there's other gestures that you know, if we can refrain from that, then it can be really good. All right, thanks for speaking with Central Coast Newspapers. Pleasure.